Family Theater presents Maureen O'Hara, McDonald Carey, Pedro de Cordoba, and Jean Ruth. Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents McDonald Carey, Pedro de Cordoba, and Jean Ruth in The Lost Mine of the Padres. To introduce the drama, your hostess, Maureen O'Hara. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives. If we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. Tonight, Family Theater takes great pleasure in presenting The Lost Mine of the Padres, starring McDonald Carey as James Cutter, Pedro de Cordoba as Padre Domingo, and Jean Ruth as Alina. The errant night winds that sweep up and down the long land that is California whisper many a story. Gay and challenging, somber and tragic. But perhaps the strangest and most exciting of all is the golden legend of the lost mine of the Padres and Juan Cuaterros Lopez, known better or worse as El Coyote. And for this history, let us go back to the year 1812 and Mission San Fernando, drowsing in Southern California. The mission is a prosperous one. Its missionaries are doing great work among the peaceful, indolent California Indians. And San Fernando's fame is carried far and wide, not only because of its way of life, but because of the heart of gold in the quiet brown hills just to the north. Mother Lode, the mine of the Padres, the glittering gift of the earth to its children. No one is happier over this wealth than Padre Domingo of the mission. He has many hungry mouths to feed, a new world to build for the glory of God. And because San Fernando is one of the richest pearls in the chain of missions which Father Junipero Serra had strung the length and breadth of California, evil men came too. Men who seek not God, but gold at the mission. Always Padre Domingo has blessed them, outwitted them, and sent them on their way empty-handed. But there comes a time when the good Padre finds himself facing an enemy whom he fears above anyone else. He has sent for James Cutter, an American soldier of fortune, and now one night soon after. Padre Domingo! Good to see you again. See, si, see, si, my son. Oh, you're welcome to my eyes. Sit down, sit down, Senor Cutter. Uh, that I will, Padre. I sent for you, amigo, because trouble has come to the mission. Well, then I'm grateful for this trouble, because it gives me a chance to see my Elena again. What trouble can come to San Fernando, Padre? Some neophyte forget to say his prayers? It is not to laugh at, my son. Oh, I'm not laughing at you, Padre Domingo. You've been my first real friend. The mission, my first real home, and and through you, I met Elena. Hmm. No, I'm not laughing, Padre. I die for you. Pray God that will never come to pass. But danger's riding to Mission San Fernando, Senor, and that danger's the bandido, El Coyote. Coyote? I never heard of him. That is not surprising. El Coyote has not been south since you have been guarding the mission, my son. Juan Lopez has not been south for many years, but now he has heard of the wealth of the Padre Mine. Uh -huh. And he is on his way. That is why I have sent for you. Lopez won't be the first bad man I've disposed of. El Coyote is of an entirely different breed than the others, amigo. 
Like the animal whose name he bears, he is wily, swift as the wind, silent as a shadow, yellow-eyed. Yellow eyes, huh? He can rob, pillage, and loot. Then, when the chase comes too close, he disappears like smoke, like the phantom coyote himself. Sounds like a good hunt, Padre. Do not discount Lopez, my son. He is one prey which comes into the hunter's trap and destroys the hunter. I see. Well, have you any plans? I've been warned that Lopez will be here tonight or, or tomorrow. I was praying that you would arrive first. Yes? He will not attempt to storm the mission, naturally. That uh, is not the way of El Coyote. But you will try to take the bars of gold we have hidden in the storeroom of the man. One man carry off all that gold? Man? Hmm. Who can say whether Lopez is man or devil? He can make himself appear to be anyone, anything. He can walk in the midst of enemies and remain undiscovered uh, until it is too late. Then I must do the same thing. What? I'll disguise myself as, as one of the Indians. Yes, yes, that's the best. I'll work with them, live right here at the mission, watch and wait. Está bueno, amigo. I could not have planned better in a month of thinking. You are dark enough to pass for one of the neophytes. You speak their language. See, si, you may fool even El Coyote. I know I can. But think twice before you undertake this hazardous vigil, Senor Cotter. Within the week, you are to be married to Elena Rivas here in the mission. You have the privilege of refusing me. Tell me, Padre, would you have sent for me if you'd thought I would? No, my son. Then we understand one another, Padre. My work is to keep law and order here. Love has not made me a coward. Oh, it is well. But there is still another sacrifice you must make, amigo. What is that? Once you don the disguise of an Indian neophyte, you will not be able to see Elena until Lopez is taken. I will say goodbye to her tonight. Tell her I'm going on another short journey for the mission. And after saying adios to Elena, you will return here. Yes. I will have the proper clothes awaiting you in the servant's cell near the chapel. Good. Now, what if I have word of Lopez and want to tell you? Uh... Uh, leave a note in the secret room behind the altar. I shall go there at intervals to uh, meditate. I have it all clearly in mind. When next you see me, Padre Domingo, it will be as an Indian neophyte. My prayers go with you, my son. Uh, there is one thing more. Yes, Padre. It is probably just another Indian superstition, but they whisper whenever Lopez approaches, the coyotes can be heard barking from the hill. I'll bet Lopez started that one himself to frighten the Indians. Perhaps. But when we fight fire, my son, we must not overlook the smallest spark. True. Now, I ride to my Elena, then back here to set the trap for El Coyote. Adios, my son. Que Dios te bendiga. Adios, padre. <laughs> Jim Cutter vaults onto his big sorrel and rides away through the star-hung California night to the hacienda of Elena Rivas. He smiles a little grimly as he finds himself listening for the voice of the coyotes above the rhythm of his horse's hooves. But all is quiet, and at last he arrives to find his senorita in the fragrant shadows of the patio. Her dueña, the chaperone, is also there. But smilingly and considerately keeps her eyes on the scarlet bougainvillea flaunting its blossoms on the adobe wall. A mockingbird sings its heart out from a pepper tree nearby, and Jim Cutter forgets Father Domingo and Juan Lopez in Elena Rivas' kiss. Oh, Jim, Jim, you have come back to me at last. Little Elena, it's been forever since I've held you in my arms. Oh, forever, querido mío, since last week. Oh, my darling, I'll be a proud and happy man when I can hold you in my arms forever, when you're my wife and nothing... Nothing in the world need part us. And I would be so happy, Jim. You know, already I am wedded to you in my heart. I have been ever since you first rode up to the hacienda. So gay, so brave, so handsome. Oh, my wonderful Americano, Jim. When I looked into your eyes, I sent you a sigh from my heart. Elena, you're so sweet, so gentle. 
Like the white doves at the mission. I, I don't know if I'm right asking you to share my life, darling. Gee. It's been a rough and tumble one. You're not used to anything but the peace of this hacienda. The mission. This whole valley. Rich, warm, beautiful. No, my forever used to only your arms. Your lips carry the mio. Oh, Lena, I wish. What's that? Oh, only the voice of the coyotes from the hills above us. You've often heard them here, Jim, when the moon is full as it is tonight. Oh, yes, of course, that's it. But now we must seek my father, Jim. He is most anxious to see you. I can't stay long this time, darling. I, I'll be back to discuss the wedding arrangements with him, but for now... You are not staying? Yes, I'm, I'm leaving again. Another journey for the mission. But, Jim, you have just returned from one. It's for... Father Domingo, Elena. Si, si, I know. And ordinarily, I'm glad for you to go, beloved, for you ride back to me the sooner. But just now, as you spoke, a cold wind chilled my heart. I have never felt that before when you left me. I'll be back soon, darling. How soon? Oh, two, three days, a week. For a lifetime. Sweetheart, trust me to return. Trust Padre Domingo. Beyond the grave, you know that. But the thing I mistrust, I, I do not understand. I cannot tell you why. I must go now, Elena. See, si, Jim, see. Si. Go, if you must. We've got a lifetime ahead of us, darling. You're to be my wife. I know that by heart. Then believe it always. Remember it, darling, until I return. I will remember, querido mio. Elena. Back over the moonlight-spattered road gallops Jim Cutter, the memory of Elena's farewell kiss flaming on his lips, the voices of the coyotes echoing in his ears. At last, he reaches Mission San Fernando, quietly stables his horse, slips inside, and finds his disguise awaiting him in the servant's cell, as Father Domingo had promised. Another five minutes, and a tall Indian neophyte stands in Jim Cutter's place. He listens a moment, then slips a gun inside his tunic, puffs out the candle in the cell, and walks out on moccasin feet through the arched corridors, up and down the vaulted halls, out into the walled garden where roses hang their heavy heads. Come on, Lopez. I'm waiting for you. Alert, listening. Jim Cutter knows the bandit must be very close this night, hiding somewhere out there in the moonlit hills or sage-scented canyons, waiting to spring. But the hours of the night walk into dawn without incident. And next morning, this newest Indian mingles with the others, particularly those who are working in the mine of the Padres. He speaks to them in their own language. So, you take the gold from the heart of the hills to the north? Yes, my brother. Much gold. Then, here at the mission, it is melted into gold bars and returned to the storeroom in the mine of the Padres. It is safer there in the arms of the earth. That is good. The earth protects it, its own. Your face is strange, brother. You have just come to the mission? Yes. I come from the mission in San Diego. Oh. Tell me, are there any other uh, strangers here this day among the Indians or the priests? No, not this day, nor for many moons. You are the first, brother. But not the last. I'm sure of that. <laughs> The day spins itself into evening, and still all is quiet, all is peaceful at Mission San Fernando. At the hour of sunset, the full-throated mission bells chime out the call to prayer. And the Indian neophytes gather in the candle-starred interior of the mission church for worship. Jim Cutter stands among them, uneasy, watchful. But nothing happens. And then... A golden horse pounds up the dusty road to the mission, bearing a strange rider, a man in the brown robes of a Franciscan, but with the glowing yellow eyes of a coyote. As the services end, Padre Domingo and the other priests begin to leave. A yellow-eyed priest questions one of the Indians. Padre, your mercy. Peace, my son. Uh, tell me... You have worked hard today at the mine? Si, Padre. Making bigger the storeroom of gold. Bigger? Right as well. 
for tomorrow you carry more bars of gold to the storeroom. Is it not so? Oh, no. Not tomorrow, Padre. Do you not remember? We carry the gold there tonight. After Vespers. Ah, si, tonight. After Vespers. The yellow-eyed Padre raises a hand in benediction and turns from his innocent informant to find himself staring directly into the eyes of another Indian who has evidently been standing nearby all the time. Well, why are you standing there? I was awaiting your benediction, Padre. It is well, my son. You startled me. The stranger Padre smiles thinly after blessing the Indian, stands silently until most of the neophytes have filed out of the chapel, then follows, his head bowed as if in silent prayer. Down the corridors and once around the adobe wall, his steps quicken to a run, loosening the brown robe as he goes. By the time he reaches the golden horse under the olive trees, El Coyote springs from the disguise of the Padre and stands revealed in the tight velvet trousers and gaudy sash of early California, heavily armed. The man stands listening a moment, tensed, and makes a running, silent leap to the saddle. And in another instant is pounding along the road to the north and the mine of the Padres. Meantime, the tall Indian runs silently through the mission arches, bursts out into the garden where Padre Domingo walks in reverie. Padre, Padre Domingo. Yes, my son. What? Senor Cutter, this is dangerous. More dangerous than you know, Padre. Tell me, are the Indians taking more gold to the mine tonight? Tonight? Why, yes, they, they should be starting now. For the journey is arduous, they're, they're burdened heavy. And El Coyote awaits them at the end of their journey. El Coyote? How did he know of this shipment? I told no one, not even you. The Indian workmen knew. They told a strange priest in the chapel, a priest with yellow eyes and a thin, sardonic face he kept in shadow. It is Lopez. He's already on his way north. I heard a ho horse pounding away when I was looking for you. I know Lopez is going to the mine. I must stop the shipment. And to have the bandit come back here for the treasure, innocent blood will be shed. No, Padre. With your permission, send the gold as was planned. Only, I'll be leading that line of Indians. You, my son? I'll beat El Coyote at his own game. In the mine of the Padres. <laughs> who comes from Mission San Diego. Do you not wish you were back by the sea now? Because the road is hard and the gold heavy? No, my brother. This gold we store will care for Mission San Fernando and for my children and yours. No road is too hard. No burden too heavy for that. It will care for us if no bandido steals it away. There are whispers... That El Coyote is lurking in the hills. I have heard his voice. Hey, El Coyote, the terrible one, who strikes like a rattlesnake and vanishes like smoke. Bandido, he may be. But El Coyote is still a man, brothers. He can die as easily as you or I. Uh, he's more than a man. Evil spirits ride with him. No evil spirits. El Coyote is only as strong as you yourselves have made him, brothers. Your fear... Uh, you are right. We should not fear Lopez, for he is one and we are many. And here is the entrance to the mine. We have arrived safely. I carry the torch. Uh, I have the key to the storeroom. I will lead the way. It is well. Lead on, brother. The passage widens. Yes. We are almost at the storeroom. See? There is the door. Soon you will see the treasure of... Mission San Fernando. As the last Indian files into the mine entrance, a pair of following yellow eyes blaze in the gloom like an animal's. A shadow blots out the stars for a moment as it fills the entrance. The last Indian in line, sensing sudden terror, turns, begins to scream out a warning when a wicked knife flashes silently. One Indian after another falls under the swift, merciless attack of El Coyote. Until at last, he creeps up on the leaders just as one is swinging back the massive door to the storeroom. Carry your torch inside, brother. Take care not to stumble over the gold piled high inside. Oh, what a sight. What a sight. Row upon row of solid golden bars. Uh, nothing like that to Mission San Diego, eh, brother? <laughs> what is that, an echo? Listen. 
I hear no more. It must have been an echo. Uh. It is no echo. Ay, El Coyote. Lopez. The knife. It is bloody. He has killed our brothers. I said don't move for my knife will taste your blood. You've killed enough, Lopez. You came for gold. Take it. But no more killing. Keep away from that door. You are the Indian who stood behind me in the mission. Yes. Your eyes too sharp, your tongue too commanding for a simple Indian neophyte. You are an Americano. Oh, no no more you. killing, Lopez. An Americano in the gun. <laughs> you make this all the more interesting for El Coyote, senor. Drop the knife. Certainly, certainly. You brothers, leave this room. Get out into the tunnel. But what of you? Never mind me, out. The most. Oh, we'll wait for you, brother. I'm following immediately. Now, Lopez. Unfasten your gun belt. Unfasten my... Stay where you are. No <laughs> tricks. One Americano thinks he can take Lopez. Lock El Coyote here in a golden trap. Si, senor. I shall unfasten my guns. <laughs> ah, that is right, you, know. you may shut the door now with your dead body. Juan Cuatero Lopez will leave when he likes. With the gold. Ah, bar upon bar like golden rungs and the ladder to heaven. <laughs> the prayers of the mission San Fernando have indeed brought an abundant answer to me. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? My, my mind imagines things, an echo, only an echo. <laughs> Who dares to laugh at Lopez? But, oh, it is the mine itself. They are all haunted by ghosts of the earth. And the gold, oh, I see a golden glittering ghost. But this one I understand. I will take the gold, carry it out, and hide it in some safe place. Oh, the bars of gold as in my eyes, or did the wall of this room seem to move? The, the walls are moving. The bars of gold dance like living things. Oh, Dios, there's an earthquake, ah, an earthquake! That, that is the whole story, Padre Domingo. El Coyote is lost in the heart of the mountain. I and the stranger brother from San Diego are the only ones to come out alive. I pulled him out just as the tunnel fell. Peace, my son. You have done good work this day. Go now and rest. See, si, but first, Padre, what of my brother from San Diego? He will live. Oh, gracias a Dios. Gracias a Dios. Padre Domingo. See, si, Elena. Is there anything more we can do for Jim? No, my child. The bullet has been removed. His wound is cleansed and bandaged. We can do no more than watch and wait. The rest is up to God. Prayer is answered, isn't it? If we pray believing, see, si, my child, prayer is always answered. Oh, I was so afraid the last time Jim came to me. I, I did not understand why, but I prayed. Now I know. And I thank God he brought my Jim back to me alive. Oh, oh but see, Padre Domingo, he is stirring. Uh, Elena. Oh, Jim. Elena. Oh, my beloved. Where? Where are we? In the mission, San Fernando, my son. Padre, what happened? An earthquake. An Indian neophyte dragged you out of the tunnel just in time, my son. And Lopez lost under the mountain. We can still be married in the mission within the week, Eddie Domito. The earthquake knocked down some of the beautiful tile roof of San Fernando, and you may be too weak to stand, but we shall be married, beloved. We shall be married. See, my children, that is God's reward to courage. And faith. I... I told you I'd return, Elena. I'll never leave you again. Oh, for us, it will never again be adios. Oh, <laughs>
Sara again. You know, it's often said that the family is the basic unit of our way of life. And the home, well, perhaps these brief verses will explain it better than we could in any other way. Home is where the heart is. You have often heard it said. Home is where the songbirds sing their sweetest overhead. Home is like the rainbow's end that beckons in the blue. Home is where your brightest dreams take root and all come true. And yet, it's more than just a place where people sleep and eat. A home that's real has something infinite and sweet. It may be just a cottage or a castle with a dome, but if God dwells within its walls, it really is a home. Yes, when God is in a home, when daily family prayer is a family practice, home is the happiest place in the world because the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. <laughs> From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you McDonald Carey, Pedro de Cordoba, and Jean Ruth in The Lost Mine of the Padres, with Maureen O'Hara as your hostess. Others in our cast were Lamont Johnson, Ted DeCorsia, Jack Crucian, and Donald Morrison. The script was written by Virginia M. Cook, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by J.F. Mansfield. The closing poem was written by Nick Kenney. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who have so unselfishly given of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week at this time when Family Theater will present Richard Widmark and Barbara Hale in God and a Red Scooter. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.